Hey there calendar users, thanks for stopping by. In this video, we're going to be going over how to create and use the multiple host scheduling event. So you can see here where I have a couple of these, here's a multiple host, and here's a multiple host, and here's another multiple host. So in this video, we're going to be going over what they are, how to create them, and how to use them. So let's get down here and click create scheduling event find the multiple host option here and now we can kind of go over what multiple host is so a scheduler can meet with a collective group or team of hosts so what that means is basically um, members of a workspace can create a scheduling event together and send that link out to people to book times with um, both of them so if we go back to here this link is one I use quite a bit for um, John and I. So this link shows times where John and I are both free. It only shows times where John and I are both free. So it looks at both of our calendars, all the calendars that we have created, and will only show available times where both of us are free for someone to book a meeting with the both of us. So let's jump back into here and create it. For the most part, it's gonna be very similar to creating um, any of the other scheduling events, um, like one-on-one, -on -one, round robin, group, where we're going to name it. So let's put general chat with Nick, and we'll put Steve on this one. You'll pick the scheduling page it goes to. You already have your link created here. We'll put a description. You know, feel free to book a time with Nick and Steve of calendar.com. Looking forward to it. There we go. Get you a good color in there. Go to continue. The same thing here. We're going to put in the uh, same thing here as um, the other scheduling events. I'm going to put the duration, right? How long we want the meeting to be. We give options, date range, um, same as the others, infinitely. We can do a range of days or we can do rolling days. We'll keep it infinitely. And this will be the working hours for the both of us. So um, Steve is in a different time zone, so he might want to start a little bit earlier. So we want to add a little bit more availability maybe for him. Um, so just adjust this to, to meet where what makes sense for both of your working hours, right? Um, and then within this time frame, or however many of you there are, it doesn't have to just be two, right? You can have as many people in your workspace be part of a multi-host multi uh, scheduling event as you want. Um, so you'll set your working hours right. Um, this is the time frame that people will be allowed to book within. Obviously, it's going to look at our connected calendars for availability and all that good stuff. And this is to make sure, you know, people aren't booking at 3 a.m. on a Saturday, right? Even though we're both free at that time, we probably don't want to take a meeting then. Same rules as all the other ones, right? Buffer time, time in between your meetings, start time increment, um, what times the meetings are allowed to start on. Um, I always have mine set for 30 minutes, meaning all my meetings um, start at 1, 1.32, 2.30. If you have it set for 15, then somebody could book from like 1.15 to 1.45, right? 1.45 to 2.15. So totally up to you just how you like your meetings set up and, and organized. Schedule notice, your uh, how much notice you get when somebody books. If you have no notice set, then somebody could book um, with you right away, right? Like, oh, oh, they're both free in five minutes. They can go ahead and book. A lot of times you might want a little bit more notice than that. So this is where you'll select that. And you can select a custom time as well if uh, these basic ones don't, don't fit your needs. Disable conflict. Um, this is a pretty unique uh, use case where if you wanted to allow yourself to be double booked, you could. And you could click this to... Um, disable it looking at your calendars for availability. Most people do not want this, right? Most people want their calendars looked at for their availability so they're not double booked, but you do have that option. Click continue here. Okay, so this is where it starts to differ a little bit from the other uh, scheduling events. This is just where you're adding uh, the people you're going to be a part of this link. So again, I'm going to click Steve here because that is who I've set this one up with. So now um, it knows that Steve and I are both hosts and both of our calendars need to be looked at to find times where we both are free. And this is where you will add your location, all that good stuff, in-person, web conference, phone. And then we have the integration with Zoom, Google Meets and Teams. We'll click Zoom here. Um, and it will be my Zoom since I am the host, the, the first host, the creator. So this will be my Zoom link since I'm creating it. Advanced options. 
You can invite permanent guests if you like that will always be invited to meetings, um, but it won't look at their availability. Then you can also block um, certain emailers from booking if you like. Last step, you're gonna set your email reminders, your text reminders, um, the custom questions, right, that you can fill out at that form um, begin. So we'll add a question here so you can see what that looks like. Let's say we wanted the person booking to put in their company name and we wanna make that required. They have to answer that to book and we can control how they answer it as well. You can set up payments, meaning that you can charge people to book with you through a Stripe integration. Uh, we have a confirmation page or redirect um, where it'll show them a link on the confirmation page or you can redirect them to a different page once they book if you choose so. Um, you can also make this um, a, a private event, meaning that it won't just automatically show on your scheduling page. You kind of have a little bit more control over who has access to book on this uh, scheduling event. So let's create it. Last steps. And there we go. Here it is. So now we can see what it looks like when somebody books on this link to meet with Steve and I. There's the Zoom meeting we had set up. You can see um, if I go to our time duration, you can see where it's going to allow us to pick between the different ones that uh, I selected, you know, 30 or 15 minutes. Um, and then you can see where, you know, it's already taken into effect the days that were we're both that we're both free, right? So um, you can see where it's already it's already taken our calendars into into effect. So it looks like we both do have some time on Monday the fourth, and here are those times where people can book with both of us. So um, you can see where it's already looking at the calendars and, and taking some availability off. Where there's it looks like there's no day on uh, Wednesday the 29th. There's no day um, in December that we are both free, right? So that's why that's all grayed out. And I'll go ahead and book on it, confirm. And then here's that company name deal that we put in there. Um, name and email are there by uh, default. Um, again, you can add as many of these questions as you want. You can make them required or not. You can see a little asterisk there, which means that it's required. Um, and now when somebody books on this link, it's gonna go on Steve and I's calendars both. Um, we're all gonna get the confirmations, the email reminders and the text reminders we set up are also gonna start going out and that meeting is gonna go on our calendars. So. There you have it. That is how you can use and create the multiple host scheduling event. Thanks guys, have a good one.